As the preseason is coming to a close in the NFL with the final week of games heading up this weekend, we got a lot to talk about because teams are making moves. We'll talk about a trade that happened leading into that first weekend between two AFC teams. Then we'll get into what other trade candidates could be floating out there. Maybe some big names, maybe some not so big names, but guys that teams might be looking to move all that and more right here on the Friday edition of the Locked On NFL podcast. I'm your host, Chris Carter. We're going to get this started. You are Locked On NFL, your daily NFL podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On NFL Podcast, the Friday edition as always. I'm Chris Carter here with your boy Q, closing out the week as always. Q, it's always good to see your face, my man getting us ready for some for some games it's the last weekend we got to deal with preseason football i know we're excited to get it every year but then as soon as it's here it's like all right give me the real stuff exactly man it's the final week of the preseason that means the regular season's right around the corner of course there's two weeks in between the final week and the start but who cares uh looking forward to all the players being as healthy as possible going into the regular season and 17 actual games in 2021 18 week season 17 games should be a lot of fun i'm looking forward to it my man it should be really a lot of fun but the nfl still has a lot of storylines to play out before we even get to that point and one was the trade from the baltimore ravens to the new england patriots sending their rookie db sean wade of ohio state over to the Patriots, I believe the compensation was for a fifth this upcoming draft and a sixth in the draft after that. But Q, this is kind of odd because how many how many times do we see teams trade rookies during their rookie season? Which is exactly <laughs> what happened right here. Uh, Sean Wade, a guy who I think people a lot of people had different opinions on him. I liked him as a more physical in the box kind of slot corner. Some people saw him as like, oh, he's an outside corner that just had a bad year. I don't think that's his profile, but it's clear whatever his profile is, it didn't fit the Ravens and they wanted to at least get something, some kind of compensation back for him. Yeah. And, you know, I really respect the Baltimore Ravens. They're one of the better front offices in the league. They usually figure out exactly what they need. They usually find guys later in the in the draft that are really good gems and they have a lot of talent in the cupboard. So they let guys walk in free agency because they have another guy coming up right behind them. So when I saw that they drafted Sean Wade, I said, whoa, they must have a good idea of how they're going to use him. Well, quick, fast, in a hurry, they turn around and they trade him before the season ever gets started. So that kind of lets you know that whatever their plan was, they didn't see what they liked in training camp. So they decided to move on. You know, the Raiders did something similar to this a year ago. They traded Lynn Bowden Jr., a third round pick, uh, to the Miami Dolphins, which was like, oh my gosh, the sky has fallen. It's incredible. And the one thing I said about it is even though it's a fail, you you absolutely failed if you waste a third round pick on a player. At least you got something in return. At least you got something in return for a guy that you knew was not going to make the squad. So even though the Raiders caught a little bit of hell for that, and you know it, it's it's well deserved, I felt like they made the right decision to at least trade him instead of just release him. And that's what Baltimore did. And Baltimore gets the benefit of the doubt because, as I mentioned, their front office is damn near second to none. Yeah, I mean, they they that was an impressive move to, to at least get some compensation. If you're if you have a guy that you don't believe in that you know ain't a fit, might as well get something back from him. Uh, and again, Sean Wade himself, I believe, is a fifth round pick. So it's like you know that right. that's not the same as a third, but right. still getting sure. something for that guy is important. And hey, you got two picks over the next two years, so um, that you know solid return there. But it got us to thinking, what other players could be traded? before the preseason gets, uh, you know, concludes here. Uh, Greg Rosenthal of uh, around the NFL on NFL.com, he pro- pro- proposed some names here. So I wanted to get some some reactions from you, Q. Uh, the first name he had here was linebacker from the Dallas Cowboys, Jalen Smith. And in this, he also threw in that Leighton Van Der Esch could be in that, com- that conversation. What say you, because, you know, Michael Parsons was the draft pick, but you'd think with the Cowboys – You'd want to kind of have athletes at linebacker because you've seen how injuries have just marred this this defensive group over the years. 
Yeah, you know, um, I, I like what the Cowboys did in the draft. They got Micah Parsons, obviously, in the first round. More importantly, in my opinion, they went and got Jabril Cox, the linebacker out of LSU. So that makes both of those guys that you mentioned, that makes Jalen Smith and Leighton Van Der Esch expendable. Uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't take Jalen Smith unless this was pre-bowl uh, injury Jalen yeah, Smith. And he was a dog, man. I hate that for him that he got hurt like that because he would have been one of those, I think, in my opinion, one of those all pro linebackers for years to come. He just never quite recovered as far as his speed. Uh, he never was the guy that can go sideline to sideline. He's great north and south right now, but he's not great east to west. And so that's unfortunate for him. Leighton Van Der Esch, he came into the league with a neck roll. So he already had an issue. You know, he already had yeah. uh, injury history. So both of those guys, if you don't need them for a full season, a full 17 games, maybe they could be guys that you can go and address, uh, you know, and go and try to uh, uh, get them as a, a trade partner. But you, you don't want to give up a lot of capital for them. And the thing with Jalen Smith, he signed a contract extension not too long ago. So you're eating or you're taking on a big contract as well. So I, I think that neither one of those guys are going to get moved before uh, before the season starts. I, I agree with you there. Now, other guys on Greg Rosenthal's list, you know, some smaller names, Zach Ertz, you know, a tight end that's kind of past his prime. O.J. Howard, yeah, yeah, O.J. Howard, a tight end that's kind of, you know, hasn't really caught on with the Buccaneers. He's intriguing, though. Isn't he intriguing? You know, he's very intriguing. He's very <laughs> intriguing. He's um, that out of, uh, out of Alabama that is like, man, you know how good he can be? He just has been banged up and then yep. he's falling behind different guys. And, of course, mm-hmm. Tampa Bay's loaded now. But he's so intriguing. Like I feel like a, a team or a coach is going to say, you know what I could do with that talent? Or you know what I could do with that kind of athlete? So I think that there's a chance he could get moved. What are your thoughts? There's a chance. I, I, I could see that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure You know what team makes the jump for him. But, I mean, hey, that's the thing is that the Buccaneers – I mean, here's the other thing. The Buccaneers are in win-now mode. So – you know, I'm not so sure unless they're getting a, a piece somewhere else that they could use. But this is a team that returned 22 starters after winning the Super Bowl, which is just unheard of in the NFL. So I'm very intrigued to see, you know, what kind of return they could get for O.J. Howard, considering his track record. Um, but certainly that's um, it, it's, it's a question to ponder if you're an NFL team looking for an athletic tight end. And, you know, if you could strike goal with O.J. Howard, it'd save you from investing a top pick in the, at that position. But to me, the biggest name on this list, and I think everyone would agree here, it's not in Kill Harry. It's Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. Because he's still got the, you know, he's, he was hurt last year, but there, until he shows that he don't got it, that's what, you know, I'm going to believe that he's got it at the cornerback position and that he's going to be a tough, a tough guy to, to have to have on your wide receivers. Um, there's been rumors for a while that, that a trade like this might happen. It hasn't come to fruition yet, but. If Stephon Gilmore is on the market, if the Patriots are really selling there, I can really see them getting a high return for this guy still, despite despite you know he had some injuries last year, and it's you know, it's something that people are questioning right now. Yeah, I mean, and he's a guy that wants a contract extension. That's kind of where it all starts is with the contract. You know, he's not getting paid like a high profile defensive back, and in my opinion, he still is a high profile defensive back. And if you're, you know, one guy away, if you feel like you're one DB away, maybe there's a tough wide receiver in your division that you think really needs to have a shutdown guy on him. Stephon Gilmore, I think, would be your dude. So I, I do think that there's a chance that he gets moved. But I also will say this, Chris, the Patriots actually look pretty pretty good. And I yeah. know it's, I know it's only the preseason, so you got to take that with a grain of salt. They look pretty stinking good. What if they make a run? What if they? Uh, what if Gilmore's out there and helps them make a run, and they get back into the playoffs after missing the playoffs in 2020? That that that's where I say I'm like I'm not so sure that you know you're selling selling when you got a chance to compete is not a good idea. So I'm not right. so sure that this would this this would actually happen. I know there were rumblings of it, but uh, yeah, if the Patriots feel like they compete, and best believe if Stephon Gilmore thinks that they could compete, I think he'll be like, all right, I'll I'll, right. I'll ride this wave for now and and and, and see what happens. Um, and go but, against Buffalo, <laughs> have mm, the opportunity to go mm. up against Buffalo a couple times a year. Yep. That would be that would be you know get you some revenge games in and if yeah. you guys it, it's crazy we're talking about the Patriots as underdogs they've never been underdogs for most of the past twenty years right. but they're in that position where now legitimately if someone walked in the room and said oh no one believes in this yeah they don't they don't and so uh, them going up against Buffalo. 
that would be a very interesting storyline if Stephon Gilmore could play into that. But again, there's a lot of different guys that could be on that trade bubble, could be guys that we see get moved around. Again, this is the lowest uh, salary cap that we've had in a long time in the NFL. So that means that you know teams might get a little you know tight with trying to sign the players they do want to sign. That means it's other players are going to have to go. There could be some wheeling and dealing to close out the, the preseason. But there's a key player in the NFC East who will who is looking to try to play in the season opener September 9th when the Buccaneers take on the Cowboys. That's Dak Prescott. We're going to get into his situation in just a second. But first, I got to tell you guys about Built Bar. Built Bar is the healthy treat that tastes you like a candy bar. And Built Bar is the ultimate protein bar for you because it's the official protein bar of the U.S. track and field team. And it comes in so many different flavors. Whether you want a fruity snack like raspberry, strawberry, or orange, or something different like salted caramel, cookies and cream, Rocky Road, or my personal favorite, double chocolate, Built Bar has so many flavors for you to enjoy. And the best part, they're all healthy. They range 130 to 180 calories, 17 to 18 grams of protein, only 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. That's a tasting healthy snack that'll save you from eating that snack. You'll regret later, and it can help anyone stay on task with their diet. Order today and get your favorite flavor delivered right to your door by going to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. That's L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Keeping it rolling here on the Locked On NFL Podcast. I'm Chris Carter here with your boy Q. Q, we're getting word now that the Cowboys are going to take Dak Prescott off a pitch count to finish out the preseason. They want to see what he's actually got. Now, there was a report that, you know, there were reports that he might not be able to play at all this season. There was there's been doubts to see if, if he was going to be able to, to, to suit up and throw with you know, with his with him still recovering from his injury. But if they're giving him this, this you know, give him the long leash, like, hey, we want to see what you got. That tells me that he feels like he's right, like, like, like they, they, they feel like he's going to be ready to play. I'm not so sure that this is going to be that big a deal, and I, I'm, I feel confident that we're going to see Dak Prescott, if not week one, very soon in the NFL season. Well, you know, I think that that we're all going to see Dak Prescott. I just don't know how effective he's going to be. I'm not. Sure. Um, you know, 100% convinced that everything that the Cowboys are trying to sell to us is 100% true. You know, right. Jerry Jones is a great businessman. He's an oil salesman. You know, he's an oil dealer. He's that guy. I just, I don't know, man. I just, I don't believe all the hype around uh, he's going to be fine. I mean, these guys went in and, and talked to the Texas Rangers. They had multiple MRIs done. I mean, they had all kind of things done. They've been real kind of hush-hush with this situation. I'm not buying what they're selling, that everything is fine. I think that there is a level of concern with Dak Prescott. They just gave him that big, huge contract. Of course, he's coming back from the ankle surgery uh, after having that horrific injury in 2020. I, I just, I don't know. Something doesn't feel right. And I've always been told, if your gut don't feel right, it's more more likely something's not right. It's not just gas. There's a situation going on inside my belly where I don't I don't think that this Dak Prescott situation is right. So uh, I'll be interested to see. I'm glad that he's supposedly going to get some action on Sunday against the Jaguars. I'll be all eyes on that game, just kind of paying attention to see what he does. I'm sure he won't be in there long, but we'll see how effective he is. You know, I mean, whenever you have a big time injury and, you know, you played sports, I played sports. I know when I tore ACL, I was more focus on my other leg and then I ended up tearing ACL on that leg because I was leaning heavily on one leg you know it's yep. just you kind of just in your mind your mind plays it tra plays tricks on you so this is going to be interesting to see Dak Prescott come back from this injury and the shoulder injury and see exactly what he has you might actually start to see what a lot of cowboy fans wanted to see from the from the jump is a heavy dose of Ezekiel Elliott where they got the run game going my mind's playing tricks on me. And I, I, I feel you, man, because th th that does happen when you get when you hurt something and you're trying to recover. You don't know. And because sometimes, you, you know, maybe you don't put more pressure on the other leg. Maybe you go in there. You're thinking, I'm going to I'm going to will this thing back. And then you press right. too hard on it. And you don't and because it doesn't feel the same. You know, the Steelers are looking at that with Devin Bush at linebacker. And he tore his ACL last year. So it, it's still a question as far as can he be. But I mean, if. Dak Prescott can't go, Q. These Cowboys are in a lot of trouble. And this is a year that, you know, if he's healthy, they would stand a good chance to, to make a run in the NFC. They could, they, they you know, the NFC East still hasn't really had a team emerge and, and, and lay claim to it. You know, that could be the Cowboys' chance this year to do just that. Um, but if he's not, if he's not here, 
Woof, that's that, that's going that's going to be a rough sell for me uh, picking the Cowboys to do even, much even in the NFC least conference. I mean, look, they they went out and made a move defensively. They went and got Dan Quinn as a defensive coordinator. They went and mm-hmm. got Micah Parsons in the draft. They went and drafted a lot of defensive players because their defense stunk. But bottom line, the Cowboys go as Dak Prescott goes yep. right now. If they if Dak Prescott's not available, the Cowboys are going to stink in 2021. I mean, that's bottom line. You saw what happened last year when he was out, when they had Andy Dalton, they had Ben DiNucci, they had this, that, and the other. They had Chris Carter. They had your boy Q. We all threw passes for the Cowboys last year. and We all stunk. So, I mean, bottom line, if they want to be successful, they've got to have Dak and he's got to be back and he's got to be 100 percent. And I don't I'm not convinced that he is. I'm not sure when he's going to be 100 percent. But the Cowboys depend on that. And I'll tell you this, when they go up against the Washington football team, that offensive line better be on on their A game, because if they get after Dak and start hitting him and knocking him down to the ground, that shoulder, that ankle, it could all be bad. And then their season could go straight down the toilet real quick, fast and in a hurry. And we know how quickly people jump on the Cowboys. What you know, when when things are going bad. I and mean, listen, I went to Chain University. I was friends with plenty of Eagles fans. I saw some literal fights between Eagles and Cowboys fans. If the Cowboys start slow, man, you're you're gonna hear it from 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 here to California. People talking stuff on them. So it's gonna, I, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how they how they lead into the season, how health how healthy Dak can be, and how well they can protect Dak. You know, they still got Ezekiel. Like, they still got a run game that they can depend on to try to take some of the pressure off him but that's still a lot of pressure for for a guy coming back off a serious surgery and, and you know all through training camp they weren't sure how much they can use him they're still trying to figure out how much they can use him so <laughs> lots, right. lots, lots lots of lots of questions there um i just want to point out before our next ad read that when i played for the cowboys i completed a couple passes q through uh no completions and two interceptions so uh, i'm a db you know, db's win games <laughs> so i was, I was- I was picking you off in practice, and then I was trying to double as a quarterback in the game, and so I wasn't very good. Listen, man, I was uh, I was one of the linemen. I was one of the dogs. I would I see we hunted for you all. We looked. We was like, where they at? Block the deep. Like we would. We if we if we didn't get a, if we got our guy at the line of scrimmage, it's like all right, where's the safety? I want to crush him. Uh, so, so, uh, but listen, man, if I ever had to, if I ever had a quarterback, you know, it'd be, it'd be like what the Broncos went through last year when, when their whole, when their whole team was down, it's like, Oh, it's just, we're just going to run the ball and hope for some, for some triple options to catch people off guard. Um, but in all seriousness, it's a, you know, we will see what, what Dak Prescott has over the next couple of weeks leading into the season. And if he can return, because uh, again, the Cowboys can be a major story in the NFC if they can be healthy, win the NFC East, earn earn a home playoff game, and, and you know bring some things that way. But if they're falling apart, then then you start to open up. Could Washington make a run? Could could if the Giants could just figure out themselves and you know and 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 stop getting into problems you know with themselves? Can the Eagles? I mean, we were you and I were talking about how the Eagles are in a lot of trouble this year. You know, there's you know that division will be wide open again and we may have another team with a losing record, make the playoffs from there yeah. as a division winner. So uh, that, that's why that's, that's important to talk about, but we have a, a couple more things to discuss with the games coming up. Q and I are going to give, give you our games that we're looking at for the final week of preseason. First, I got to tell you guys about BetOnline.ag. It's that time of the year again, and all eyes are now turning to football as teams are back on the gridiron to start the football season. As always, BetOnline is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including the half million dollar NFL Mega Contest and the two hundred thousand dollar NFL Survivor Contest, open right now at Bet Online. Head to the website and use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. Be sure to take advantage of their opening day super promo. That's make a bet on the Thursday, September 9th season opener between the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. Maybe Jack Prescott will be playing. We don't know. And if you lose that that bet, Say you bet. Say you bet against the the Cowboys and Dak shows up. Your wager will be refunded by BetOnline.ag up to twenty five dollars. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports, from football to basketball to boxing, right down to horse racing. Q, do you bet on horse racing? Uh, no, I don't do that. No, that's not, yeah, that's not that's not a me thing either. I'm, I I just is not my speed. But if you that is your speed, go to BetOnline.ag. Don't wait to take advantage of all the great offers they have for the twenty twenty one season. BetOnline.ag, your online. Sportsbook experts. Wrapping things up here on the Locked On NFL podcast, the Friday edition with Chris Carter and your boy Q wrapping things up. He's Locked On Raiders. I'm Locked On Steelers. Let's get into some of these games this weekend, my friend, because 
there's some interesting matchups. There's also the question of who will play and who won't play because right. this is that odd third preseason game. Typically in NFL history, the third preseason game is when everybody plays their starters. They play for a half, but this preseason is shorter. Most teams are playing three games. The Steelers somehow got well, you found a way to play four preseason games this year. Uh, but there's some interesting teams here that I want to see more from. I'm going to pick one game on Saturday. I want to see more of the Saints because I don't know if you watched that 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 <laughs> ja- that Jaguar Saints game, man. Yeah. But Marquez Callaway was putting up some numbers with Jameis Winston. And again, it was just the Jaguars. They're you know they're the Jaguars. They're in full rebuild they mode. They're terrible. They're they're terrible. But good teams beat up terrible teams, and that's what Jameis Winston and Callaway did in that that Saints offense in that first quarter, or first half, excuse me. And now they're going up against the Cardinals. Don't know how much of each team's starters we'll get to see, but I do imagine that they have, they're they both with quarterbacks that aren't as situated in their offenses. they both got new elements to their teams. I could see some interesting storylines unfold from that, from that game. Yeah, I could see some as well. Um, I'm just so interested and so curious about – What's going to go on? Who's going to be out there? Who's really going to be playing? You know, who's who's the guys? And the way that every team has navigated through the preseason differently is just it's it's such a question mark. You know, I mean, traditionally, the game three was the dress rehearsal. You'd see the starters, you know, sometimes up to a half. But now, I mean, you're not seeing any starters at all throughout the course of the whole preseason. So some some like that some teams like that. Some teams don't like that. I just don't know what's a better approach. You know, some people say you need to get uh, you need to get as many snaps in as possible. So you have a rhythm going into the season. Others just say, hey, all we care about is being healthy. So it's such a crazy scenario. But as far as this game and and the Saints and and Jameis goes, uh, Jameis made a lot of folks a believer on Monday Night Football. Is he really going to be that guy? Is he consistently going to be that guy? I have no idea. I root for him. All he does is eat W's, Q. What do you mean you have no idea? That's what he says. I love his personality. I kind of I like the guy. I love the fact that he jumped up on a table at Florida State and acted a fool, but it was cool. I mean, like, hey, that's who he is. No problem. I'm not mad at him. You know, that's great. At least he I'm showed him. I hear mad at him. Why are you mad at him? The, the EW thing. Did you see this? Go back and look at that video and look at Deshaun Jackson's it. face. Look at Deshaun Jackson's face as he's saying, I eat w- we eat W's. It's like, dog, what are you doing? Like, listen, I'm I mean, not, at least he's eating something. <laughs> oh my god listen i tell you this right now i i have always been a Jameis winston like hey i want to see this this guy do well he's acc florida state I, I loved him in college when he was when he was playing but man is he just continued to step on his own feet i hope he doesn't do it with the saints and that's what we'll get to see but i'm, I'm sorry there is there was no comeback for me on the on the on the ew thing you just gotta just gotta let that one go let it ride into the sunset never talk about it again when someone says ew you say oh what I, what are we talking about I know, that's a dumb I eat w's on that. the daily man i'm gonna start talking about that on the daily i'm, I'm gonna eat a w in just a minute matter of no, fact but you gotta do know. you gotta do what he did when he puts like his fingers in his mouth that's what made it stupid uh, i mean i might i might do that i might put a little barbecue you, you, you will not you will not. I know you. You are. You are not. You will not belittle yourself on by on camera putting your fingers in your own mouth to eat a duck. Yeah. See, look at you. Look at you. You play. You ain't gonna do it. Hey, <laughs> hey. I know you. Q. How All about right, moving Q. on to another game? How That's about we? I was do- about to do that. Why are you taking so long, man? What's your game uh, that you're looking at this weekend? Unbelievable. Well, you know, I got to ride with uh, the Bears and the Titans, and the reason I got to ride with the Bears, I don't think it's any question. It's Justin Fields. I just want to see. The game was going a little faster for him when it, against the Bills. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to see what guy, but dang. I want to see what he could do. I want to see if he could take that next step. Uh, I, we all know Andy Dalton is not the solution. We all know he's not the answer. We know he's not going to play for very long in Chicago. My question is, how long does Matt Nagy stack with the stick with the red rifle before he turns it over to uh, Justin Fields? Obviously, it's going to happen sometime this year. Is it going to be quick? Is it going to happen after the bye week? Is it going to happen before the bye week? I mean, when's it going to happen is my main question. So I just want to see what goes on. I want to make sure that he stops taking shots to the head with guys coming at him point blank range like he did the other night. So, Justin, uh, look out. It's the NFL. It's no longer you're no longer at Ohio State and you're just better than everybody else. You know, what I mean, this is the NFL. Everyone's good. So look out. But I think he's a hell of a player. So I'll be looking out for him.
Oh, same here. And I just when he said that that, that oh the game kind of was going looking slow to me. I was like, man, don't say that because then right there because players hear that and they're like, oh, it's going slow, is it? And yes, and you saw, and not that that's what that guy had the intentions right. of doing, but it's just when it happens, even if that wasn't the intention, that's what everyone's going to point to. And it's going to be a media point, but I will say this, Justin Fields is taking it on the chin. It was extremely classy how he came out and he told bears fans do not to boo Andy Dalton. He is my teammate and he, and he represents you. So uh, I, I do like the way he's been carrying himself, um, you know, moving forward. My other game I'm looking at here, and this isn't a game that I think will be, you know, featuring two, you know, super dominant teams, but two young quarterbacks that we want to see what goes on with these with these offenses and young players in general. And that's the Dolphins at the Bengals Tua Tagovailoa, Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase. You want to see how these guys are coming along. If Tua can't be the man in Miami, there's problems, though. I'm hearing reports that he's looking better. So I, I, I want to see him f- finish this out. If he does start in this game, I want to see him finish it out. Even if he doesn't, you know, I want to see how, how the Bengals are showing continuity on offense because, you know, I just did a, a, a locked on crossover with all the AFC North guys uh, earlier this week. And it was like everyone was consensus, like the Bengals are going to be in last place. But they need to start putting uh, building blocks in place in in, in Zach Taylor's system. Otherwise, they'll never get out of there. And they're going to – and Joe Burrow is just going to be wasting away. So that's why I'm looking at that game. Yeah, no, that should be a good one. Uh, I'm very interested in it. I'm rooting for Tua. Man, I like Tua. I know that he went and came into the league injured. Uh, I like Brian Flores in Miami a lot. Uh, I like the makeup of that team. I hope Tua does really well. And, of course, Joe Burrow and the Bengals. I mean, I just think that they're a mess. Uh, You know, we've talked about it before. The decision that they made to go and draft a wide receiver instead of offensive lineman early, uh, that was stupid. Uh, That was very Bengal-like. And that just, you know. Asking him to get hurt. Asking him again. Again, exactly. So, I'll be interested in that game as well. Uh, Tua, Joe Burrow, I don't know how much either one of these guys will play, but at least we'll get to see a little bit of, of, you know, potentially – great quarterbacks of the future. I mean, Joe Burrow has all the makeup. Can he stay healthy? Tua, you know, he's got the, he's got the, uh, the history is uh, from Alabama. Can he yeah. make it in the NFL as a lefty quarterback on top of that? Not a lot of them do. So we'll see how that shakes out. I got one more game for you that I want to see. And it's not because I do yeah. the Lockdown Raiders podcast, but uh, the Raiders and 49ers, a game that I'll be at on a Sunday. I want to oh, see the, that game. I want to see it because I want to see Trey area. I want to see what Trey Lance is going to do. How long is it going to take? Similar to what I said about Jimmy G, or not Jimmy G, what I said about Andy Dalton. Andy we Dalton, know about yeah. Jimmy G. I want to see how long it's going to take for Trey Lance to get into the game, and, and, and I mean in the regular season. When's he going to take over for Kyle Shanahan and company? I want to get an up-close and personal look at, uh, at Trey Lance just to see what he's got, what kind of goods he's got. From everything I've heard and everything I've seen on TV, he, he looks like he's the part. Now I want to see him in person to see if he's the part. So that's another game I'll be paying attention to Sunday, 1 p.m. on the Pacific Co- or Pacific Standard Time. I was going to say 1 p.m., but I'm like, yeah, it says 4 p.m. on my time. I keep forgetting. <laughs> we, we are, two, like, what, two time zones? Three time zones. Three time zones away. Yeah, I was brother. Yeah, yeah, this is this, this is wild. That's how you know we got love here because, you know, we, you know we, can, we can be in completely other parts of our days, but we still rock it out here on the Friday edition of the Locked on NFL podcast. So check it out. It's the last weekend of preseason football before we get the real dose of football. Uh, you, we, remember, there's a week off between preseason football and the NFL week. So after this weekend, there will be no football next week. We will be basically talking about week one for an entire week and then for another week as we roll yep. into it. But September 9th, when uh, when, the, when the Cowboys take on the Buccaneers, they raise the banner in, in Tampa Bay, their second one, we will be getting you ready for that. And Q and I actually will probably doing the show recapping that game after, after, it, after it happens. So uh, lots of exciting stuff to talk about when it comes to uh, this NFL season getting underway. Let me tell you something about that game real quick. What's this will up? be what my like two-and-a-half-week, maybe three-week prediction. Okay. I say the Cowboys win that game if Dak Prescott's playing. <gasps> really? I'm you just going to throw it out there. We'll talk about later why, but, yeah, I'm going to say that right now on uh, on August 27th Ooh. that uh, the Cowboys win that season opener against Tampa Bay. Okay, okay, look at you with the hot takes, taking the away team on, on the banner night. And it's not too often that the banner the banner hoisting team loses in the, in that relationship. I know it's happened a couple times, and especially recently it started to happen more, um, but it will be intriguing. I mean, the Buccaneers, they weren't a team that started out hot last year. They were 7-5, and five and they caught on hot late. Uh, so, 
you know, very interesting stuff there. That if the Cowboys could catch these guys off guard, but again, we got we got two more weeks before we go and talk about <laughs> right. that. So uh, we it's going to be an exciting time. But Q, as always, it's great to host this show with you, my friend. Let people know they can find you, follow you, and get more of your work. On Twitter, that's where you can find me at all times. At your boy Q254, Locked On Raiders, Locked On Bets. Uh, everything that I do, I put out there. Locked On NFL, of course, put that out there as well. Uh, you know, just a lot of work all the time. Stay busy. That's how I like it. Again, on Twitter, at your boy Q254. Uh, Chris, where can they find you at? As always, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Carter Critiques, as you see below. You can listen to the Locked On Steelers podcast. You can read me on DKPittsburghSports.com. You can check me out all over the place. Uh, if you're in the local Pittsburgh area, I'm got, I'm doing Skylights Highlights, the our high school football show going over all the best highlights of Western Pennsylvania on Channel 11 WPXI. So check out all the great work. And you'll find you can if you want to see all my stuff, like Q, I put all my work right on my Twitter handle. So follow us at Carter Critiques, at your boy Q. Support the Locked On NFL brand by following this podcast on apple spotify google podcast youtube odyssey all the places as well as all of our individual shows q i will see you next week listeners viewers we hope you enjoy your final weekend of preseason football and remember it's always steeler nation not net raider nation